Hey y'all, welcome back to Dots and Beyond. My name is Beth. Let's set up Kenny's Bullet Journal for March 2023. For this month, Kenny has chosen Lily of the Valley and Lavender as his theme. Now these are very simple flower doodles to draw, so I'm going to zhuzh these up a little bit with some metallic paint. These are very economical gouache paints that you can pick up at Michael's if you do live in the United States. These came in a set that I already had. I'm just gonna go ahead and get the little bit of metallic sheen onto the flowers. Then we're gonna trace them. We're gonna do some stamping for our headers. This whole setup is gonna take me about two hours. That includes drying time, an interlude by Faramir, one of the Dots and Beyond felines, as well as my grocery delivery in the middle of the way. All the materials that I am using are linked in the description box below and I am going to go through this setup on each spread in the same order. Paint first, stamping second so the paint has a little bit of time to dry. If I need to I'll add some ruler lines to that particular page and then we'll come in with some sparkles just with a black marker as well as outlining our flowers to make them stand out. For this step I have the gouache paints very watered down. I don't need a whole lot of opacity on this one we just want a little bit of that color and a little bit of that shimmer. I'm also not doing any layering, so between the thinner paint and the lack of layering, this is the thing that's going to give us a quicker drying time so we can move on from one spread to the next. So while we give these paints that drying time, we're going to move on to the next elements. First off, we're going to do the stamping. I'm going to stamp in the March header as well as the quote and use these Distress Ink stamp pads as well as my letter stamps. Now when I'm stamping in block letters, I do like to go ahead and sketch them out on the page so I know where each letter is going to go. I also leave one dot grid space between each one of the letters. I feel like it gives it a little bit of room to breathe. The quote that I chose to go with this theme is, despite the forecast, live like it's spring. And that quote is attributed to Lily Pulitzer, who was an American fashion designer known for her floral prints. And also her name is Lily to match our Lily of the Valley theme. Now every now and then I do have to just double check and see if I feel like this paint is dry. And this one I felt like was still just a hair wet because we are going to trace over that with a Pigma Micron. Don't want to get the paint gunked up in that Micron. So I decided to wait just a little bit longer and went ahead and put in some sparkles or confetti, whatever you want to call it, some tiny magical elements around our lavender and Lily of the Valley first. This I'm using a Tombow Furunosuke to do just because I had it on hand nearby from doing my own March setup. I also incorporated some moon doodles in and about our florals. I felt like we just needed a third element to change things up just a little and so every now and then you'll also see a moon doodle. For finishing off the flowers, I am tracing over my lines with Pigma Microns, switching back and forth between a 0.05 and a 0.01 depending on how large or small the doodle is on the page. Now, one of the things you are going to have to remember is even though the Pigma Micron has archival ink, any of the places where you trace directly over the paint, it might take it a little bit longer than usual to dry than when it's just on regular paper. And that will wrap up these very simple doodles with the Lily of the Valley and Lavender theme for Kenny's cover page for March. Now, anytime that I do use paint, just as a precaution, I go ahead and stick another sheet of paper in between these pages as I move from one spread to the next just to make sure everything was super dry on that page before removing that paper. We are going to go ahead and move on to the calendar spread. For those of you who may be new here, I set up my own bullet journal as well as that of my son Kenny. He goes ahead and picks the themes. His first bullet journal was full of his fandoms. This one is things he likes. It's a little bit more on the magical side. And this is where I found out that Lily of the Valley is his favorite flower. So while we set this page up in the same order that we did the last one, let's learn a little bit about Lily of the Valley. Lily of the Valley is a woodland flowering plant with bell-shaped flowers and a sweet scent. It's native to the northern hemisphere of Europe and Asia. As pretty and delicate as it is, Lily of the Valley is highly poisonous if consumed by humans or animals. Lily of the Valley was Christian Dior's favorite flower and Dior created the perfume Diorissimo based on its scent. Lily of the Valley is the Gemini birth flower and Kenny is a Gemini. When I asked him to pair something with it for interest, he chose lavender, which in floral astrology is the Gemini flower. I don't think he realized that at the time, but it certainly made for a happy accident. Lavender symbolizes grace and purity of soul. Lily of the Valley signifies luck 
and joy. While our paint's been drying, I've been building out a standard grid calendar. What I did do differently is for this one, I didn't use any vertical lines, just the horizontal ones to help keep it a little cleaner and neater, just like the flower doodles. But in this moment, I also realized I only had 30 days instead of 31, and that my doodle was gonna get in the way of day 31. But I ultimately decided that this was a future Kenny problem and went ahead and added day 31 along with the doodle that's below it and he can just figure out where he wants to write around that. Honestly, as tiny as he writes, I really don't think it's going to be that much of a problem. Now that we have that corrected, tell me what is your birth flower? My birth flower for August is the gladiolus, which is very apt since it is native to Africa and the Mediterranean area. It also comes in a wide variety of colors. And in floral astrology, which I admit I had to look up because I did not know, the flower for Leo is the sunflower, which makes perfect sense. Both species of these flowers are ones that prefer full sun, and I am like, me too flowers, me too. I am very much ready for the winter glooms to dissipate so that we can get back to some more sunnier days. And with that tidbit of floral trivia, this calendar page is done. I am removing that piece of paper so I can move it from one page to the next. Again, just to make sure that that paint is fully dry before we set up what is going to be Kenny's finances page, as well as his first week of March. This is going to deviate from his January and February setups just a little, so we have five weeks in March that we need to work around, and so I've gone ahead and put that here. Typically, this page has finances on one side and a notes page for Kenny on the other. I did a little bit of a snoop on his January and February notes pages to see how much space he's using, and while he's using the page, he's not necessarily filling out the whole thing. So for this particular month, I think I can combine that with his playlist later on in this setup. As I stated in the beginning of the video, we are starting off each spread with this paint so that it has a little bit of time to dry. Now I'm also gonna pop in some of the framework for the rest of the page. The left side of this finance tracker is a spending tracker and it normally has some pretty heavy lines going vertically as well. Much like the calendar, I'm trying to lighten that. So I'm gonna use this end of the gray Tombow to do those vertical lines. They're not gonna show up that great on camera. You can see them in person so that Kenny can see the delineation between those specific columns on the page. And those columns are just what he spent money on, the amount, the date, and then a column for need or want. So he can indicate whether that was something he actually needed or if he's spending more money on things that he just wants. And then in the bottom right corner of that page, he's got a place where he can indicate the amount that he gets on each of his paydays for March, as well as the beginning and ending balances for both his checking and his savings account. Those who've been around for a little bit know that I typically draw an eight by eight box for each one of Kenny's days on his weekly setups. In the spirit of restricting how many heavy boxes we have on the page, I've just done daily headers for each one of these, and I think it does help lighten up that page as well, make room for those florals, and lets the page breathe. And the last two steps on the page are to finish tracing out all of those florals, and then come back in with that Tombow Food no Soke and draw in our little confetti or magical moments across the page as well. And with that, we have his finance tracker ready to go, as well as week 10. We're gonna move on and go ahead and set up two pretty identical spreads other than the doodles for both weeks 11 and 12, and then weeks 13 and 14 as well. And I don't know if you can see it, but as we move my scrap of paper from one page to the other over here on the left, there is a little bit of purple paint and stuff starting to show up on that. So that's why I always have that piece of paper in between my setups when I'm not 100% sure every inch of that paint is dry. Let's talk about materials for just a minute because you absolutely do not need paint to do this setup. This could absolutely be done with markers. The one thing that I would do differently is I would go ahead and get the pen down first. So I would go ahead and draw over my pencil lines with the particular marker or the Pigma Micron is what I would use. Go ahead and get the flower shapes down on the page, then use a purple marker or a colored pencil to color in the lavender. And then for the Lily of the Valley, because it is a white flower, you could just use a little bit of gray marker or a little bit of a gray colored pencil just to do some shading on one side or the other to give it a little bit of dimension so that it still looks like a white flower with a little bit of shadow on it. 
This is a super simple way to get two weeks onto a single spread if you are using an Archer and Olive or a notebook therapy journal. The spacing works out the same where you can have up to nine boxes that are eight dot grid spaces across and 12 down. And I don't need nine for a week. So seven of those are for the days of the week. And then I have a mini calendar and some artwork. I squished the boxes from 12 deep to 11 deep. And that gives me a little bit of room at the bottom for the header as well for the week number. This is a wildly different theme than Kenny's February theme, which was a dark academia love potion theme. And that one was dark and there were doodles everywhere and it was a little more confined. So we decided to open it up a little bit this month, make it a little bit lighter, make it a little bit easier on mom. And he said, mom, you definitely deserve to have an easier one after doing the theme for February. I will link that video in the cards above if you have not yet watched it yet, as well as Kenny's entire custom journal playlist down in the description box below. First up we are going to set up weeks 13 and 14 and like I said you have a perfect 8 by 12 boxes on each page of a spread so I can do one week on one side and one week on the other for Kenny. It is the easiest way for him to function is just to have a space each day to write. He doesn't need anything else on his weekly dashboards. It does leave me room though for that artwork as well as a mini calendar just so he can see where he is in the month. Sometimes I combine those unused squares in the middle and do a larger art piece for the entire spread. Sometimes I separate them all out where I have four individual blocks on the spread, two on one side, two on the other. I just shake it up, move it around a little bit to get artwork in different shapes and sizes to help vary it, but still keep the basic structure. This is a great setup to use if you're a sticker person that doesn't necessarily like to draw because then it always leaves you a space for stickers, whether they're vertical or horizontal. Then you can also use the sticker headers as well. This spreads a prime example of me just moving a few of those elements around. I moved the mini calendar from the left side of the spread to the right, and then the larger piece of artwork from the bottom right to the top left just so that it's cohesive. Everything still looks very much the same, but each page isn't identical. And the only thing that we have missing now is our little celestial confetti or stars that I'm using to just round out the pages, give it a little bit more interest, and for Kenny, a little bit more magic. And of course, sometimes we have to stop what we're doing and spend a little time with our fur babies. So this was Faramir's first foray into screen. It is just a harbinger of things to come as he decides that he doesn't really want me doing this bullet journal setup today. We're gonna say that attempt number one by Faramir was just a little bit of a nudge. Here in attempt number two, he gets a little bit more persistent, actually plunks himself down in the middle of everything. So we take a little more time to give him some good scritches. Then he does go ahead and get up off his own accord and disappear out of the screen. But that is not the last we are going to see of him today. Just as I got all of the cat hair cleaned up and was ready to start again, Faramir comes in and decides that no, I am not going to do this anymore. He decides to move into position and there he stays. One eternity later. Resuming our regularly scheduled programming, this is the completed spread for weeks 13 and 14, and we are ready to move on to the final spread in this setup for Kenny for March. Now, if you remember, I did take away an entire notes page from him in order to fit in that fifth week that March has, and this is where I have moved it. So on the left side of this spread, I have given him half of it for his notes, half of it for his playlist, and on the right side, we'll do his reflections. But first up, we're going to paint. So this is gonna be the last that we put some of the Lily of the Valley and Lavender on the page. On the left side, I used a Lily of the Valley just to separate that notes and playlist. On the right side, I did draw a circle and then do my doodles off of the middle of that for his reflection area. Here, I've gone ahead and popped in those headers. I'm also changing his reflection area to match that that I've been using lately with the four L's. Those being liked, learned, lacked and longed for. For the end of the month page, we have used reflect or reflection as well as review. And this month, Kenny did tell me he does prefer the word reflect or reflection. Review makes it sound a little more clinical to him and he does want to be a little more introspective. So that's the word we're gonna be using from now on. Using this light gray Tombow, we're gonna highlight the headers as well as every other line just to make those free flow writing spaces easier to see. And now I've been using this a lot lately in both my journal as well as Kenny's journal. When your eyes get as old as mine are, it does definitely help to have those indicators of every other line. 
And the last step in this setup is to go ahead and outline our flowers. So you can see here between the notes and the playlist, I do have a lily of the valley. I went ahead and included some of those celestial symbols on the top and the bottom. So we still had them, but they weren't taking up too much space. And then here on the right, again, I used a circle to draw our little doodles off of that to make a little bit of a wreath. And we're going to put some of those celestial symbols around the outside as well as on the inside just to fill in some of that white space. Once those few final touches are in, in place we are done and we're ready to go ahead and flip back and do a full flip through of this March setup. This month I know I enjoyed finding out that my son's favorite flower is Lily of the Valley. If you have made it this far go ahead and leave me any sort of floral emoji down in the description box below in honor of March and sunshine times to come. And while you're down there don't forget to tell me what your monthly birth flower is as well. This week we will have a bonus video popping up as I review my reading journal for February and we talk about what my po pick for March is going to be. So that'll drop either on Monday or Tuesday. I definitely prefer to keep those reading journal videos close to the end of the month. That's a wrap on this March 2023 custom bullet journal setup for my son Kenny. Again, the playlist for his selected setups will be included in the description box below. Thank you so much for being here. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you in the next one.